What do you do in your free time? Do you have any interesting hobbies? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Keith from English Speaking Success and the website The Keith Speaking Academy. Here to help you speak better English, give better answers and get a higher score on the IELTS speaking test. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you lots of cool phrases um, so that you can talk confidently and naturally about what you do in your free time or your leisure time or your leisure time, as they say across the pond in America. And also I'll be showing you how to use these phrases, right? So by the end of the video, you'll be able to talk confidently about your hobbies, how often you do them and why you like them. Great. Oh, and it gets better because I'm going to show you how you can use different tenses to talk about hobbies as well. Now, if you're an IELTS student, pay attention. Oi, wake up. <laughs> If you're an IELTS student, you know that in IELTS speaking, you need to show a wide range of grammatical structures, including different tenses. So this video ticks all the boxes. That's a great expression to tick all the boxes, meaning to fulfill all the requirements. Great. And it gets better. <laughs> Listen up as a bonus. At the end of the video, I'm going to tell you the most common mistake that I see students make when talking about this topic of hobbies and free time. Now, before we start, let me tell you the secret to succeeding in IELTS speaking. Oh, and if you're new here, if this is the first time you're watching me, you may not know this. So listen up. This is important. The secret to success in IELTS speaking is to speak natural spoken English. Not formal academic English. No, natural spoken conversational English. That's it. And that's exactly what I show you in all of my videos, right? Now, once you've learned these phrases today, of course, you need to practice. Unfortunately, it's not enough to just sit back and watch me. No, you need to be practicing. And you can practice on your own, but I think one of the best places you can practice is Cambly. It's a fantastic online platform with native English speakers where you can practice all the English that you need, especially for IELTS speaking. I'm going to tell you more about Cambly later, um, and I'll tell you how you can get a free lesson as well as some great discounts on their platform. So look out for that. But right now, let's start to talk about your free time activities. OK, so let's talk first about different types of free time activities. OK, um, or as I said, we could call them leisure activities or hobbies. We can also say pastimes. I think there are probably four common types of activities. There may be more, but this is where I would put most of the activities and hobbies people do. First of all, indoor activities, right? So this could include playing games, board games or video games, um, reading, watching TV or watching films, um, or just chilling out, hanging out with friends. Admittedly, that last one could be outdoors. And that moves us to the next category, which is outdoor activities. Now, this can include things like um, sports, be it playing football, skiing, swimming, jogging, um, gardening. It's a very popular hobby in the UK. Traveling, although I know not so much lately, but for a lot of people, traveling is a great pastime. And also going shopping. Again, going shopping, right? Could be outdoors, could be indoors. Next category is collecting things or collections. The most common collections are stamps, coins, and nowadays things like NFTs. Yes, if you're a modern, newfangled young man like me, 
<laughs> no, seriously. NFTs, right? Non-fungible tokens. These are all the rage nowadays. Lots of people are snapping up and buying NFTs. An NFT, if you don't know, is basically a unique digital item that you can buy and sell. It may be a painting, a piece of art, a video clip. All the rage. Check them out. The fourth category is creative activities. So I'm thinking about things like playing a musical instrument, right? I play the guitar, for example. Um, painting, maybe knitting or some similar handcraft work. And also, I guess, taking photographs, another popular one. So there you have four categories and lots of different types of uh, hobbies. Let's now move on to see how we can talk about your hobby. So how do you answer the question, what do you do in your free time? Well, here are some nice phrases you can use, right? You could say, I get up to a lot of things, meaning I do. I get up to means I do a lot of things. Or you could say, I don't get up to much. If you don't do very much. Most importantly, don't say nothing, especially if you're doing an English test like IELTS. Don't say, I don't have a hobby. Say something, right? It's important that you speak out. So to get up to means to do. Now, sometimes to get up to something can mean to do something that's maybe bad that you shouldn't do. But to be honest, we use this when you say to people, what did you get up to at the weekend? It just means what did you do? So in the context of hobbies, it's fine to say, I get up to a lot of different things. We can also say more simply, I like to do yoga or I like doing yoga. Oh, Keith, I've been thinking about that. What's the difference between I like to do something and I like doing something? Well, it's a very good question and thank you for asking. Great. It's very, very simple, right? You can use both to express your enjoyment of something, right? So I enjoy yoga. I like to do yoga. I like doing yoga. However, and I like to do something can also be used to show a habit or a choice. For example, I like to do yoga on Thursdays. You're focusing on the habit every Thursday or the choice to do it on Thursdays rather than focusing on the enjoyment. That's it. Super simple. More phrases to show that you love an activity or a hobby. Um, I'm fond of playing video games. That's true. What about you? I'm fond of... Great. Or I'm into playing video games. What about you? I'm into... Nice. Or I'm passionate. Passionate. I'm passionate about playing video games. What about you? I'm passionate about... Very, very nice. Now, here is a really good learning tip. Notice, if a verb follows a preposition, then that verb must be in the gerund with the ing, right? I'm fond of playing, of playing. Preposition, verb, ing. I'm into playing games, right? I'm passionate about painting. Remember that important learning tip. Now, I appreciate sometimes you may not be passionate or love a hobby, but you do it less seriously, just for a bit of fun, right? In this case, you can say, well, I like to dabble in cooking. I sometimes dabble in painting. Last week, I dabbled in NFTs. <laughs> It's not true, just an example, right? So notice, I dabble in something or doing something. I dabble in painting. 
What about you? I dabble in. Nice. In addition, we can say, I play the guitar. I'm just an aficionado. An aficionado, from the Spanish word aficionado, just means you're not professional. In many cultures, right, you may like to be quite humble. You don't say, I play the guitar and I'm fantastic. <laughs> no, I play the guitar. I'm not very good, but I, I play. I'm just an aficionado. Or I play for fun. I just play for fun. Or um, I'm an amateur. I'm an amateur. Say that. I'm an amateur. Again, meaning I'm not professional. So it's just for fun, not too serious. Lovely. Now, leave me a comment down below. Tell me, what do you do in your free time? Now, when talking about your hobbies, we can not only talk about what you do, but also how often you do it. It's great to go into more detail. So to talk about how often we use adverbs of frequency from the simple to the advanced. Simple, I often paint. I regularly paint. I frequently paint. I regularly... Mm. And you, I regularly... Good. More complex. I paint whenever I can. I mm, whenever I can. Or I paint as often as I can. As often as I can. I mm, as often as I can. Yay. Or I paint whenever I get a chance. And more complex, I don't paint as much as I would like. I don't mm, as much as I would like. Or I don't get round to painting as much as I would like. I don't get round to mm, gerund. I don't get round to painting as much as I would like. Excellent. Now let's move on. OK, so we've talked about adverbs to make your answer more interesting. Let's make your answers, right, um, even more sophisticated, <laughs> clever, better. Um, we can use different tenses, right, um, in order. And, and especially if you're an IELTS student, this is important that you show off or you show your ability to use different tenses in English. We can start with a simple and become more complex. Let's start with the present simple. So we can say, I paint. I recently took up painting. To take up a hobby means to start doing a hobby. I recently took up painting. I'm new to it, meaning it is new for me. I'm new to it. I'm new to it. Next, simple past. I started painting a couple of years ago. Or I decided to have a go at painting. To have a go at something means to try something new. I decided to have a go at painting. Or even I decided to try my hand at painting. To try my hand at is to try something new, right? Especially a hobby. I decided to try my hand at painting. It doesn't have to be a handcraft activity, right? I decided to try my hand at playing football where you don't use your hands. Well, unless you're a goalkeeper or it's American football, <laughs> right? And then more complex, present perfect continuous. So present simple now, simple past, past simple in the past, talking about something that 
began in the past and carries on until today, right? It's a hobby you still do, present perfect and present perfect continuous. We can use both. I've been playing or I've been playing football for as long as I can remember. For as long as I can remember. Can you say that? Feel the rhythm for as long as I can remember. Good. I've been ba 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 ing. I've been painting for as long as I can remember. And you? Nice. And a, a nice little idiom. I've been painting for donkey's years, meaning for a long time. Great. So we can put it all together, right? Present, past, present, perfect, continuous. I often paint. Um, I decided to have a go at painting because my daughter was taking classes. Yeah, so I've been painting for about two years now. Lovely. You can pause the video and practice for you. Right now, we're going to move on. By the way, if you're liking, if you're liking, if you like this video, if you're liking, sounds like a McDonald's advert, I'm loving it. If you like this video, press the subscribe button, turn on notifications to hear about more videos coming. Don't go away. Don't fall asleep, because right now we're going to talk about the benefits of hobbies. Okie dokie, let's talk about the benefits of hobbies. Okay, I think the three most common benefits of hobbies are help you to relax, help you stay healthy, and to socialize. There may be other benefits, but these I think are the three most common. Let me now give you some very good templates you can use to talk about the benefits. First of all, it helps me blank. Even better, it just helps me blank. Okay, It helps me to unwind. It helps me kick back. It helps me chill out. All of those meaning to relax, right? Oh, Keith, I've been thinking, right? Do we say it helps me to relax or it helps me relax? It's another good question and well done for being so proactive. The simple answer is they are both the same. You can use both. It's fine. Another template. I find that it helps me blank. D -d 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 blank. I find that it helps me blank. OK, we can say, I find that it helps me get into shape. I find that it helps me keep fit. I find that it helps me stay in shape. Right. Especially talking about sport or eating or cooking. Healthy, staying healthy. Lovely. Next, it allows me to or it allows me to just blank. It allows me to just blank. Yeah. So if we're talking about socialising, right, it allows me to hang out with friends. It allows me to just meet up with friends. It allows me to chill out with friends. Also, it's a nice way to blank. It's a nice way to socialise. And if you want to sound really British, right, and this is so natural, it's quite a nice way to blank. It's quite a nice way to get close to nature. Have a go. It's quite a nice way to... So natural. Brilliant. Finally, three nice phrases you can use to talk about, again, relaxing and fighting stress that we have so much of in the world. <laughs> First of all, it has a calming effect. It's really therapeutic. It's a great stress buster. 
Excellent. Some nice phrases and templates you can start practicing. I tell you what, I am so impressed that you're still watching, that you're still awake and that you're actually practicing as well. It's great. So listen, in a moment, I'm going to tell you the most common mistake students make when they talk about free time and hobbies. First, I'd like to tell you about a way you can practice even more all of this language, and that is with Cambly. Now, Cambly is a great online platform where you can find teachers, native English speaking teachers from around the world. So you've got teachers that are available 24 seven, any time of the day, wherever you are in the world. All you need is a good internet connection. In addition, the teachers are not only qualified teachers, but they come from different backgrounds, which can be interesting for you, right? Um, you can find teachers who may also have a background in hospitality, in business, in art, in human resources, can be very, very useful. In addition, I mean, what's great, right, about Cambly is you're getting to practice your English with a real live person, one on one, and you're getting feedback. But on top of all of that, I love the flexibility that Cambly gives you, right? You can choose the teacher that you want. You can choose when you want to have the class. You can even choose the content if you want to decide what you want to study. And also because the classes are recorded, you can go back in and review and practice again the things that you need to. Cambly have lots of different packages, so there's bound to be one that's just right for you. Now, as Cambly are sponsoring this video, thank you so much, Cambly. If you are a first time user for Cambly, you can get a free 15 minute lesson to see if the platform is right for you. If you go for the one year plan, the 12 month plan, you can use the code new Keith and you'll get a 40% discount off that plan. Fantastic. You can click on the links below, go and check it out. If you feel it's right for you and it's just what you need, go and sign up for a plan. Use the code NEWKEITH. You'll get 40% discount. I think it's so important to practice, so important to get the feedback to help you level up your spoken English. And if you're doing IELTS, to help you get the score that you need on the IELTS speaking test. OK, let's move on and let's have a look at the most common mistake students make. OK, so let's talk about the most common mistake. Now, in IELTS speaking, talking about hobbies and free time is such a popular topic that I practice this a lot with students. And here is the mistake so many students make. See if you can spot the mistake. I'll give you a few examples, right? My favourite hobby is play the guitar. My favourite hobby is collect stamps. Can you see the mistake? Play the guitar is a verb. Collect stamps is a verb. But my favourite hobby is and a noun. You need a noun, right? What it should be is my favourite hobby is playing the guitar. Or my favourite hobby is collecting stamps. Playing the guitar is the noun phrase. We can take a verb, put it into the gerund, to make a noun phrase. Playing the guitar is the noun phrase. My favourite hobby is painting. My favourite hobby is playing computer games. It's a simple mistake to make, but such an important one. Make sure you don't make that mistake. And you can avoid mistakes like this by practising more, right? Go and click and check on Cambly. You can practice and get feedback with a teacher who will help you correct your mistakes as well. And don't stop watching. Stay with me. Go and watch the next video, which is all about small talk in English. How to start a conversation in English. Quite tricky, right? Go and watch the next video. It'll show you how to do it. Lovely. And I will see you very soon. 
Thanks for watching. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.